Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm here to share an incredible work with you. Just a quick reminder before we get started. All sources and images will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find the link in the episode description as well as on our Instagram at accessible.art.history. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. Welcome to the start of season five. Over the next five episodes, I'll be discussing the Baroque and Dutch Golden Age eras. To kick things off, I'm going to dive into The Calling of St. Matthew by Caravaggio. It is often considered to be his masterpiece and is a part of trio of works about the life of this evangelist. These works were painted between 1599 and 1600 for the Contarelli Chapel in the Church of San Luigi de Francesche in Rome, Italy. The Calling of St. Matthew is an example of Baroque storytelling at its finest. Learn more, then keep on listening. Before I start discussing the painting, I think it's important that we understand who Matthew was and how he relates to the story of Christ. Our main knowledge of the scene this work depicts comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Jesus saw a man named Matthew at his seat in the custom house and said to him, follow me. And Matthew rose and followed him. Matthew, before he was a disciple of Christ, was a tax collector, aka one of the people that Jesus wasn't so fond of. This is what made Matthew's story so inspirational. Anybody could be a follower of Jesus. Matthew would go on to be one of the four authors of the Synoptic Gospels, the others being Mark, Luke, and John. In art, he is often symbolized as a man, sometimes with wings, a reference to Revelations 4-7. There are conflicting stories about the end of St. Matthew's life. The most popular one states that he was martyred in Ethiopia for holding a mass. Today, he is celebrated by the Catholic Church on September 21st and is the patron saint of bankers. This particular piece depicts the moment when Christ calls Matthew to service. Matthew is sitting in a crowded room, counting coins from his daily tax collection. On the right-hand side, Jesus has just entered and is pointing directly at Matthew. In confusion, Matthew points to himself as is asking, me? If you look closely at the hand of Christ, it mimics the hands from Michelangelo's creation of man in the Sistine Chapel. Because both paintings are in Rome, it isn't a stretch of the imagination to think that Caravaggio was influenced by it. Although I'll dive deeper into this element, I wanted to bring up some of the use of chiaroscuro in this work. There is one dramatic beam of light that illuminates Matthew, but it doesn't come from the dirty windows. Instead, it originates from the doors that Christ enters through the room. It is as if he is the source of light himself, perhaps from his holiness. As I mentioned at the top of the episode, the calling of St. Matthew is located in the Contarelli Chapel in the Church of San Luigi de Francesche. The trio of paintings was commissioned by Cardinal Matthew Contarelli. He was a Frenchman living in Rome, and this church was the home of the French congregation in the city. The cardinal wanted to pay homage to his patron saint and namesake, which made him a bit picky. Records indicate that Caravaggio painted a number of versions of each painting until the cardinal was satisfied. Sadly, those works were lost during World War II. Next, I'm going to break down the artist and his techniques. But first, let's take a quick break. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break to tell you about what software I use to bring Accessible Art History, the podcast, to life. It's called Anchor, and it's truly made a difference in my mission of making art history fun and easy to learn about. Although I'd always thought about adding a podcast to my content creation, the thought scared me. I'm not an audio engineer or a tech guru, but Anchor makes it so easy. You can use their website or app to record, edit, and spice up your audio with music. They partner with you to make your podcast a success. Not only do they take care of distributing it to all the major platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, but they even match you up with sponsors with no minimum listenership required. It makes creating a podcast easier than I honestly thought possible. But the best part, it's absolutely free to use. As someone who is in the beginning stages of content creation, I'm so thankful to have a free platform that helps me create a quality podcast. If you want to get started on your own podcast, simply go to anchor.fm, that's A-N-C-H-O-R-F-M, or download their app on your preferred app store. Thanks so much for listening. All right, now that we're back, let's dive into the artist himself. 
Michelangelo Merisi de Caravaggio was born in 1571. Like previous podcast subject Leonardo da Vinci, the end of his name actually indicates the area where he was born. Caravaggio is a township in northern Italy. It's about 25 miles east of Milan. There isn't a ton known about his early life. Caravaggio's father was an administrator for a local noble family, but died when Caravaggio was 11. His mother also died that same year, leaving him an orphan. Records also indicate that he was apprenticed to Simone Petrizzano, a pupil of Titian. Once he reached adulthood, Caravaggio moved to Rome for more opportunity. While there, he painted dozens of famous works. Caravaggio was known for always pushing the buttons of society when it came to artistic expression. Among other things, he used famous courtesans as models for holy figures, painted bare pilgrim feet, and generally humanized his subjects no matter who they were. However, Caravaggio did have a fatal flaw. He was notorious for his bad temper. Just about anything and everything set him off. He was arrested numerous times for brawls, weapons possession, etc. In 1606, Caravaggio killed a man in a duel. In order to escape charges and imprisonment, perhaps even death, He fled to various parts of southern Italy, including Naples, Malta, and Sicily. Michelangelo Merce de Caravaggio died under mysterious circumstances in 1610. Some historians believe that he was even murdered himself. Regardless of his inflammatory nature, Caravaggio and his art are some of the most beloved in history. His use of light, drama, and emotion have fully cemented him as one of the greats. In fact, Caravaggio is often considered to be the father of modern art. As you know by now, the calling of St. Matthew is actually part of a trio. The first work to be completed was the martyrdom of St. Matthew. He's at the center of the work, about to be killed by an assassin's sword. An angel is on the top of the piece, leaning down from heaven to hand him the martyr's palm leaf. Beside the characteristic diagonal lines and contrasting light and shadow, Caravaggio actually included himself in this piece. He is behind the assassin, just left of center. The other painting is called The Inspiration of St. Matthew. The evangelist is hard at work on his gospel. His expression is serious as he contemplates what the angel, probably a reference to his symbol, is telling him. Notice that there's no background and the only light comes from the figures himself. Once again, we see a classic Caravaggio painting. One of the highlights of Caravaggio's work is his use of contrasting light and dark. In art history, we call this chiaroscuro. It literally means light dark in Italian. This technique was first developed by Leonardo da Vinci. He used it to create volume, depth, and three-dimensionality in his work. Caravaggio took this a few steps further, though some would argue it's quite a few, and used it to add drama. The viewer has to almost squint and search for what is happening. It helps us to connect to the piece because we are more active in participation. Another technique that Caravaggio engineered is the use of art as a storytelling vehicle. Although previous work did convey a story, they tended to be a bit more static and composed. Caravaggio injected the human element into his work. Figures are actively engaged with both the setting, other objects, and people in the scene. It also helps to engage the figures with the audience, bringing them into the scene as well. One of the most remarkable things about this technique is the fact that Caravaggio also has background figures active. This allows for further connection with the everyday person because they could imagine themselves as participants. The Calling of St. Matthew by Caravaggio is simply a Baroque masterpiece. The artist's use of chiaroscuro and storytelling brings the early moments of St. Matthew and Jesus' relationship to life for whoever wants to view it. In all honesty, it's no wonder Caravaggio is one of the most famous and beloved artist in history. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history for updates and keep an eye out for our next episode. They drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform.